our market master who joins us now, Sanjay Dutt, director at Quantum Securities. Good morning, Sanjay. Good to have you with us. Uh, uh, very, Good morning, really, that Thank you for having me. me. Uh, uh, welcome. That bothers me every now and then that, uh, you know, the earnings and the growth have not yet caught up. How long can we run before we have to pause and wait for the numbers to catch up? I think, uh, Lata, my sense is that uh, the prices have definitely run up ahead of the fundamentals, what you correctly uh, mentioned. And, uh, you know, the probability that we've... Uh, that's the high for the year, for this calendar year. I think it's about 70 to 80 percent. Uh, to make it very simple, I think uh, from now on, we probably would see a reasonably good correction before 31st of December or the first week of January because a lot of ifs and buts still remain. And of course, you mentioned correctly that, you know, both the macro as well as earnings don't really look that good as yet. Uh, the future is rosy, definitely. Things are better. Sentiment is better. But it's not translating into numbers on ground as yet. And it's not even translating into action at company levels because I've been interacting with a large number of uh, Tier 2 companies. They are all still struggling with the single most important problem, and that's got to do with restructuring their balance sheets, debt, offtake, payments, cash flows, you know. Uh, that hasn't changed in the last six months after since the government has taken over. So I think implementation, execution is what is uh, going to really drag this market down in the next few weeks, in my opinion. Sanjay, hi, morning. Uh, so what should uh, retail investors do at this juncture? Uh, should you just stay away, wait for that dip and then get into the market? Or are there still some opportunities um, that look good now? So the opportunities are always there. Uh, but what happens is that if you buy into something, and if the market were to correct uh, 3 to 5 percent or maybe more, uh, you know, the stock that you bought is definitely, definitely going to be impacted. Mm -hmm. May not be as much, it will be, will be impacted. Mm -hmm. So therefore, my advice would be that if you have found a good stock and if you are convinced about an idea after having done your rigorous uh, reading, research and checking with your advisors, uh, you know, start nibbling in. Don't buy the quantity at one go. Mm. because there will be enough opportunities. Uh, this is a long-term uh, bull market, but it's going to be a rocky ride because you've seen a one-way rise from the lows of about 5,000 levels to 8,500. There will be pullbacks, and that's the time when you keep adding on to your favorite stocks. Mm -hmm. uh, Sanjay, yesterday after the Chinese central bank cut rates, we saw a knee-jerk reaction across the globe in metal stocks and uh, in India, Sessa and Tisco and Hindalco and all of them, NMDC, JSPL, a whole host of metal stocks were up and about. Uh, do you like that space at all? I like the space, but the, you know, but there are a lot of problems, like I said, still. Mm. And those, the resolution to those problems are a few months or a few quarters away. Mm. Uh, and prices are already, you know, kind of uh, factoring in the positives that probably one would see in the March or the June quarter. Uh, whether it's link, whether it's got to do with their fuel linkages or whether it's got to do with sustained reduction in their input cost and at the other end, you know, the offtake in the demand. So all those things are about, uh, you know, a few months away. And uh, the prices have run up and are discounting that event uh, much ahead in advance. So that's why I'm quite convinced that even in the metal sector, uh, it's going to be a struggle. We are going to see pullbacks. We are going to see challenges because we've just got coal block allocations coming in, uh, the auction process. Quite a few of these companies will be uh, bidding or will be part of the process or would be impacted by them directly and indirectly because of input costs dependent on how the auctions go, etc. Uh, so I think it's a big spag there even. I cannot say really comfortably that you know you should remain fully invested in them or you know you should be out of them. I think there are opportunities in them. But like I said about the market, there's going to be a bit of a struggle there. Mm. One pocket that the market is still finding value in, Sanjay, is uh, the auto ancillary space. I mean, as we speak, JK Tires is at a fresh high. Amara Raja had a massive upgrade this morning from one of the brokerages. Uh, is this a space that you would still buy into? And if yes, what would you look at now? I think uh, from a longer perspective, the space does have tremendous potential. Uh, we've got globally competitive companies. 
uh, who are uh, producing for not only uh, you know uh, the companies that absorb their output here, that is the manufacturers, the car manufacturers and the vehicle manufacturers, but are also exporting and are very good both in terms of quality as well as their delivery practices, etc. So the sector does look good from a long-term perspective. But like I said, you know, most of the run-up has happened, whether you look at the, you know, tire companies or you look at some of the other auto ancillary companies, substantial run-up has happened. And uh, the risk-reward is not really in favor of uh, adding new bets at this point of time. Okay. Uh, well, uh, what's the uh, take with a bank like HDFC Bank now? I mean, I think it, it, it almost sounds like a dumb question, but it's out of MSCI. It is uh, a rank out underperformer year to date. Uh, is this the time to buy the stock? No, Lata, I don't think so. I think uh, uh, much higher of fundamentals again. Mm -hmm. uh, it will outperform. It's one of the best banks to hold in your portfolio, no doubt about it but look for better price levels. And, you know, do remember the entire tone of my conversation, the entire mood that I'm setting in today is keeping in mind that I'm anticipating a reasonably good correction okay. in the next few weeks. Uh, so I'm not really wanting to sound uh, very skeptical or very mm. bearish on Indian equities as such, mm. but I think Indian equities in the immediate short term are over-owned. Mm. Uh, you know, there's too much of uh, froth in a lot of sectors. In so lot when of you stocks. say, um, Sanjay, That's when you say reasonably good, uh, what, what would you indicate? I mean, what could be the flaw for this market for the next, say, uh, six, uh, three to six months? I think the flow would be 7600 uh, or the 7700 level, le level which we saw a few weeks back. Uh, I think a good shakeout is in the pipeline. Now, whether it happens before 31st of this year or whether it happens sometime around, uh, you know, middle of January. But I think uh, we are all, uh, everything's pointing out, uh, pointing towards that. All my indicators are pointing towards that when I look at the markets. 10% mm -hmm. is a decent shakeout. Uh, what would you buy, for instance, in the Nifty, if that shakeout were to happen? I think I'll be aggressively uh, piling up bets on the banking, oil and gas sector, mm -hmm. because those are real, secular, long structural stories that that I think really are there in India at this point of time. Uh, some amount of auto, maybe, mm -hmm. but uh, I would be, uh, you know, my my priorities would really be oil and gas, banking engineering capital goods. These three I would be aggressively long if I get an opportunity. Okay, so let's take you out of your comfort zone and talk about a sector that is not on your priority list, the pharma space. We have a query that's posted on our money control message board. Uh, Likita has written to us from Bangalore and she wants to know what the long-term prospects for Sun Pharma are. Um, is this a stock that you would put money into now? Nikita, let me first say that, you know, I'm absolutely clueless about pharma. I've never liked this and I've publicly maintained that and I've very rarely had a pharma stock in my portfolio. But, you know, on a, you know, painting a broad brush really on a, on a blank canvas, that's my uh, intellect on this sector. I would say Sun Pharma is one of the better bets in the sector. Mm. Uh, very strong promoters, well managed, their, uh, you know, integration with Ranbaxi. I think very sensible moves. So if I were to probably, you know, risk my money on something I don't know and I want to put money into in the pharmaceutical sector as part of my portfolio, Sun Pharma would be there, definitely. Okay, uh, Sanjay, uh, let's not talk uh, sectors now. Uh, you, you saw the earnings in the mid-cap space and there are always businesses which vastly outperform the economy and their sector itself. Anything that stood out for you? Uh, Nothing really, because I think the earnings were relatively tepid. So uh, I wouldn't really, you know, uh, step out and stick my neck out on anything based primarily on earnings. Uh, what I what we would want to really do and what we are doing right now is uh, looking at select uh, mid-cap companies, mm. which are which would actually, you know, uh, benefit from the upcoming capital goods and the infra rollout. Mm -hmm. uh, some small uh, mid-cap companies in the infra sector have shown uh, reasonably good earnings. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that's where the place to be. But, the, the, you know, the last two quarters aren't any indicators of anything. The numbers aren't indicators of anything because it's too early to really judge mm -hmm. as to what's going to happen. 
All right, uh, Sanjay, we leave it at that. Uh, you have a good day. Thanks for giving us uh, a heads up Thank on uh, this yeah. uh, market momentum and the fact that perhaps 80% uh, probability is that the, we've hit the peak at least for this year.